Okay, so I can get it to act up now. If I'm just in gear, I'm gonna floor it. Hi everyone, good morning. Welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're back on the 1987 GMC 1500 plow truck. So if you remember last month, uh, it had this problem where once it warms up under load, it would just misfire, stall out, and then it was hard to start. Found a corroded ignition control module that wasn't making a good ground to the distributor base, cleaned that all up, put it back on, truck ran beautifully. The owners used it a couple times, but about a month later, similar problems started happening. He's like, you know, what's the deal? So, some people might say, hey, you didn't put thermal paste on the bottom of the ignition control module and that cooked the original module. Uh, I'm not so sure about that because yesterday I came here, I installed a brand new ICM, gooped it up with that special paste. Uh, now it was an aftermarket standard motor products uh, unit. Uh, started up the truck, thought it was good, actually plowed his driveway down and coming back up, I'm like something feels wrong and it started doing the exact same thing. So this is where, <laughs> you know, parts cannon versus actual diagnostics. Last time we didn't really get any tools out, we just did a visual inspection and said, hey, this looks really bad, cleaned it up and it fixed it, right? You think you're done. So now new ICM's installed. Uh, all the other parts are still kind of used, old. Um, the thing is, the parts for these trucks, they're so cheap that it's cheaper to replace the ignition control module, distributor, rotor, and cap, you know, plugs and wires, that's like basically an hour of diagnostics just in parts. Um, but I want to, this time, actually be scientific and we'll get some scope captures on these uh, ICM signals and see what the heck is causing this. I got some more spare parts, distributor, cap, and rotor, just in case we need that. Um, but there's something going on with this ignition system. Uh, what do we want to set up on the scope? Let's take a look. So this capture I have saved from a 1988 uh, Chevy K2500, I think. So four channels here. Uh, channel A, the blue trace, is the ICM reference to the PCM. So on the wiring diagram, here's our ignition control module. There's a little pickup coil, and then this module sends a square pulse on this reference wire to the engine computer. You see that's the purple and white wire. Then the engine computer, you know, once it starts up, it pulls up this bypass wire and, and tells the ignition control module, now I'm in control of the spark timing. Then on this EST, on the white wire, it sends out a pulse to control the ignition timing um, and, you know, the ignition coil through this uh, ignition spark module. So <clears throat> that's the second trace here, the red trace. That's our EST. Now on that truck, very interesting thing would happen where right here, on the reference pulse, it, it would glitch and send the computer, the EST, into a frenzy and basically cause this where the timing would be way off, the ignition coil would be overcurrented, the injectors would do weird things, and you see that glitch happening right there. Bo -bo 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 -bo. It, would, it would stumble and stutter under load. This reference pulse is extremely important. You can't have any of these small little glitches. It needs to be a nice square pulse with no noise. So once the truck warms up, I'm going to put my scope on the reference pulse, the EST pulse, and we can just current ramp the, the ignition coil. So three channels. And once this thing acts up, then we can 
say is the aftermarket ignition control module bad or potentially the um, if the distributor cap isn't isolating well enough and it looked pretty crappy on the truck the spark could actually shock the ISM and cause something bad to happen so you see when does this glitch occur well that's exactly when the spark this is the ignition coil ramp once the spark occurred look at the reference pulse and went boop <laughs> so that's definitely not good and then that sends the engine computer you know it really confuses it so I'm wondering if we're gonna see the same thing on this truck we know exactly what to look for let's uh, set up the scope get it to act up and go from there so three channels blue channel is on the purple and white down there by the ICM that's a reference channel 2 white wire EST channel 3 current clamp on the control wire coming from the ignition coil to the ICM that's the one that's grounded pulsed um, make sure that current clamp is well clamped around there one volt is 10 amps on there there's a pico scope let's close the hood down hopefully our wire won't get too pinched yep, that's still fine and I wish pico would give you a little longer wire so instead of stretching the leads you can just stretch the scope wire and uh, here we go so let's fire it up we got nothing on channel 3 or do we let's bump that down okay we do so during the rev what did we see everything looked pretty good but it did stumble. So let's keep recording. I'm gonna drive it and when it really stalls out, we'll, we'll see what's going on. So it's probably, go it's going to be a secondary ignition problem where the spark can't get to all the cylinders. Our EST and the reference look perfect. So perhaps, misfired the, uh, the parts cannon here. <laughs> Maybe it's not a bad ignition control module at all. Maybe it just needs a distributor cap. Okay, so I can get it to act up now. If I'm just in gear, I'm gonna floor it. And I'll shut it off. Everything looks spot on. Ignition coil is being pulsed. All the signals are good, but it's definitely losing, <laughs> definitely stumbling and misfiring. So let's replace the rotor and the distributor cap. I think that should fix the problem. There's, there's no problem with the injectors. We're not even going to scope that. Um, I'm just worried about this ICM sending out the correct reference pulse in the EST. Everything looks spot on. We could probably reinstall the original module or keep it in the glove box as a spare. All right, we're using some Blue Streak by Standard, made in the USA, high quality ignition parts. I think this should work very nicely. There's a new cap. You wanna make sure this um, pin here is actually spring-loaded. We'll take the old one off and uh, I'll show you what that one looks like. Alright, so here's the old rotor and cap. Now, last time I did clean this out, you can see that tower is kind of weird. And this button is not spring loaded, it's just kind of hanging out. There's a lot of dust and crap here. So, again, there's not much else it can be. And for good luck, I'm going to spray the inside of the cap with a little WD-40 keep the moisture out. 
And which ICM should we keep in here? Let's stick with this one for now and we'll leave the old one as a spare. It'll be a test for how good the standard T-series, you know, value line <laughs> components are. So let me screw that down, put the rest of the wires on, see how this thing runs. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. Well, I fired right up. <laughs> that was pretty instant. Sounds better already. I'm gonna warm it up for a little bit. Go up and down the driveway a few times. I think that did the trick. Oh, these old Chevys. You know, there's something to be said for uh, new ignition systems where there's no distributor, no spark plug wires, just coil on plug, computer controls one wire, and there's no moving parts. And your spark plugs can last like 200,000 miles. But you know that's that's progress. But still, these old systems are if you maintain them, they're pretty reliable. No issues. Let's try shutting it off. You see that EST signal comes online once the engine revs up oh yeah what does Eric go say that's Chevy Thunder right there So I think that's it for this one. We'll keep the original ignition control module in the glove box. Cap and rotor, leave that in here. That's it, hopefully uh, if there's an update, <laughs> we'll do a follow up. Hopefully this truck will last through the winter and many more winters to come. Thanks a lot for watching, we'll see you next time, bye bye.